Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to week eight of our Vote Everywhere Ambassador Training Session. For those of you joining us, the Vote Everywhere program is an initiative of the Andrew Goodman Foundation. The program builds upon the legacy of Andrew Goodman, who believed that all Americans should have the right to vote and be able to exercise that right freely. Today, the Vote Everywhere program works with young people from across the country to assist with voter registration, to promote voter education, and to support get out the vote efforts on their campuses and their local communities. This week's workshop is focused on civic technology. Our goal today is to gain a better understanding of how we can use various forms of technology to increase civic engagement. Joining us today, we have Craig Newmark, founder of Craig's Connect, Asiya Lamad, co-founder of Discourse Analytics, which produced Votify, Tiffany Chang, co-founder of Fight for the Future, which produced Vote with Friends, and Sam Novi, director of partnerships for Turbo Vote. I'm going to start by having them introduce themselves and ask them to tell us a little bit about their organizations and their platforms. And we'll start from the bottom up. I'm going to start with Sam Novi from Turbo Vote. Sure. Sam? Uh, sure. Yep, I'm here. Uh, thanks, uh, Sabrina, for having me on. Um, it's good to see some friendly faces of Viva and Tiffany. It's been great working with you guys um, uh, this fall and over the summer. Uh, so uh, I guess most actually, I think I've talked to almost all of you on the call about TurboVote already, but I'll just go over the basics. Uh, basically, TurboVote is a tool that makes registering to vote and voting by mail as easy as renting a Netflix DVD. Uh, what that means is when a user signs up, we track the user's uh, registration status, an entire election calendar, everything from uh, you know your most local primary election all the way to the presidential election. Uh, if you need to register vote by mail, we send you a filled-in registration form with a pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelope, uh, and then uh, send you text and email reminders to send those forms in by the deadline. You text and email reminders at the time you have an election, reminding you to, to uh, either send your absentee ballot or to go to the polls. Um, so, uh, in terms of how that empowers uh, voters, um, it's, uh, you know, obviously it's very exciting to make the user experience uh, easier for everyone, but it's also very exciting because it makes sharing voting as easy as sharing a link. And what we've been finding with our university partnerships uh, at 58 schools across the country is that um, the technology is making it possible for schools to build voting into the infrastructure of their college. So schools are building into the internet systems, they're building it into their class registration systems, uh, professors are emailing the link to their classes, it's uh, making it possible for schools to uh, systematically make sure that every student has um, the chance to sign up for TurboVote. Um, and uh, we're, you know, we're very excited by that success. Um, and in 2013, uh, we're looking to uh, you know, work with our current schools to get even more folks signed up, you know, expand on the work this year, as well as uh, expand to uh, more schools. And where, uh, in terms of our overall vision, we think that a world is possible where every college provides every student with all the information and materials that he or she needs to vote in every election. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'd love to work with any of the folks on this hangout to uh, try to make that world a reality. Wonderful. Next, Tiffany Chang. Hi. Um, yep, this is Tiffany Chang. Can everybody hear me? Uh, I work at Center for Civil Rights and Fight for the Future. What we do is, we're a nonprofit, but as Tiffany has said before, and what we do is um, we try to activate the internet for for good and um, and for the public good. And uh, we work on issues like internet freedom and freedom of expression on the web. Um, and we recently worked on stopping the SOPA bills in one of the largest online protests in history. Um, and um, we helped to build the tools and the messaging and the campaign to launch that effort. And um, so we, we, uh, we started the organizing on those protests. Um, what we've been doing this election season is trying to build internet tools to activate the internet to go vote. Um, and we're using a lot of the great social research that has come out recently and we've seen in the past couple of years 
um, that determines what helps infrequent voters go vote. And we have helped to we built um, a, a we've built an online get out the vote strategy for any organization and any individual. Um, and it really um, takes the social dynamic of what makes infrequent voters go vote and puts it online for organizations and individuals to uh, be able to get their friends out to vote. Um, we made something called Vote with Friends and that's a Facebook social voting application um, slash game and um, it helps it, it, any organization can pick it up and send it to its members um, and uh, turn their members into um, avid organizers for this election um, for their cause and find the supporters who care about their cause to go out and vote. So um, that's just one of the things we're doing this election season, but um, is, is definitely our flagship work this election. And uh, Sam mentioned we also worked with him on registration. We used Purple Vote um, to, to get internet users to register to vote, and um, we helped Turbo Vote working together to build uh, Online, full online registration um, workflow or flow for uh, the states where there is on full online registration. Um, but yeah, thanks. Wonderful. And next we have Asil Ahmad. Hi guys, uh, great to be on the call. Um, I'm Asil Ahmad. I'm with uh, Discourse Analytics. We run the site called uh, Votify.com, uh, which we launched last year. Um, Votify basically is a sort of peer-to-peer -peer recommendation engine for, for politics. Think um, sort of Netflix and OkCupid, but uh, instead of movies and finding people to date, uh, we're focused on connecting people with each other based on the issues that they care about. Um, so what we see is that um, as the electorate, uh, a couple of things, uh, sort of important trends. One is that fewer and fewer people are voting. Um, I think we're all sort of frustrated with uh, that reality and we're trying to figure out ways to, you know, facilitate that voting process. And, you know, I think there's a lot of parts to it. You know, registration is obviously one, but then, you know, once somebody's registered, how do you make Did we lose someone? I think so, and certainly, <laughs> last but not least, Craig Newmark. Uh, hey folks, uh, Craig Newmark, founder, customer service rep, Craigslist and Craig Connects. My deal at Craig Connects is that I'm experimenting with, in the short term, finding effective ways to support stuff I believe in by supporting the groups that do the real good and then on a uh, let's say long-term basis maybe 200 years or so figuring out how to use these techniques the deal is that well like they say the, the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends towards justice and uh, folks like us got to figure out how to make that real in the now and then beyond that so currently, I'm supporting a whole bunch of voter registration and election protection efforts, getting real about them. The uh, final one has not been announced yet. Also providing a lot of supports for people who give a lot and don't get enough in return, like military families and veterans. Right now, we're engaged in an uh, effort to use CrowdRise to support the victims of uh, Hurricane Sandy. And I can tell you that in the last hour, we met, we met our initial uh, matching goal of 25,000. That is, I'm putting in 25, and we've gotten 25,000 matched, and it still seems to be growing. The theme has a lot to do with figuring out what are those efforts that really get stuff done, how do you build on them, 
while also learning how you can take these things forward over the decades to ensure that social progress is towards justice. So do something now in the real and do it in a way though that pays off long time. I may nerd, so I think that way. And remember as ever, a nerd's got to do what a nerd's got to do. That was me stopping. <laughs>Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to go back to Asia for a moment. Hey guys, I, I don't know what did happened. Do you have anything else that you needed to add? We know you got cut off a little bit. I'm not sure. Where did I get cut off? Could, could somebody tell me what I, at what point did I get cut? Uh -oh. I think you just mentioned OK Cupid and uh, Netflix, but for uh, like okay. Visits. okay. So so let, let me just let me just quickly, uh, briefly say what I was obviously speaking to myself for about five minutes. Um, uh, so basically, you know, we launched Votify to be a way for people to connect with each other based on the issues that they care about. So through the sort of uh, going through our site, uh, reading articles, uh, answering poll questions, participating in discussions. The idea is that people start to uh, develop connections with people not based on political party affiliation, but based on the issues that they actually care about. So it may turn out that you know you might be a Republican or you might be a Democrat, but or you might be an independent, but that you actually care a lot about certain issues and actually see eye to eye on certain issues, irrespective of party affiliation. And we think that's a, that's actually a, a very powerful basis for communication, so that you know in the future, you know we hope not too far in the distant future. Um, people start uh, talking to each other, you know, on issues that they care about, and it's the, the conversations aren't sort of dominated by extreme left and extreme right, which is sort of the way the media positions the electorate right now. So um, we think that uh, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle to improving uh, voter participation, um, and I think everybody, you know, who, who spoke already are involved in important parts of that process, and where we see uh, Votify fitting in is that once you have people registered, how do you keep them engaged and interested enough uh, to care to vote? And if you if you remember the Facebook study that came out, where in 2008 they 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 were able to prove that just by seeing somebody's uh, Facebook status that they voted increased voter turnout by some relatively large percent. Um, you know those peer to peer connections are actually really important. And if we can foster and build those, then you know the hope is that you know more people get involved in the conversation, more people are involved in the process, and ultimately the politicians will have to take notice as as that sort of community and that interaction develops. That's me finishing. Okay. Well, you actually raise a very good point, and I guess the question, the first question that I'm going to have for you is actually for all of our panelists. If you could just tell us a little bit about what the expectations are after this election cycle, or, or the, as election cycle is over, what do you anticipate using the technology that you've created, or continuing to harness the people that you've engaged through the technology um, in the future for civic engagement, for working on issues such as the ones that you spoke about, Asil, um, or anything else for that matter. Well. Uh, thanks, uh, Chana. The, the the sort of what happens after November. I think um, the, the reality is that uh, number one, there's elections happening kind of every year. Uh, so it may not be the case that everybody in every state is engaged, but some people in certain states will be engaged. Secondly, um, you know, as soon as the elections are over, we got to get back to the process of governing. And uh, when it comes to you know the budget issues, when it comes to immigration issues, when it comes to healthcare issues. Those are ongoing uh, uh, challenges that the uh, sort of political uh, uh, elected officials face, and so there's a conversation that's going to be going on about those that we want people to be involved with 
uh, not just in the run up to elections, but sort of throughout the year. So we always viewed Votify as not an election tool, but a uh, sort of activation tool. And whether you care about panda bears, or whether you care about um, gun rights, or whether you care about um, whatever else, uh, there's a place for you to be um, uh, to be talking about those issues and engaging with people on those issues. Sam, do you have any thoughts on that? Sam? Uh, sure. So, uh, so I guess there's sort of three parts to how TurboVote is thinking about the post-election uh, world. Can somebody who's ever not muted mute yourself real quick? Um, Khan, I think that's you. Um, but so for our current users, uh, we're very focused that every user, um, when they sign up for TurboVote, uh, is subscribed basically to getting all the materials and information that uh, he or she needs to vote in every election for the rest of their life. Um, and so we're going to be following up with folks about their local elections, following up with folks to make sure that they uh, register when they re-register when they move, um, that kind of stuff. So that uh, you know, you know, that's why we call it Netflix for voting. That folks, once you sign up once, you sort of are, you don't need to seek out any new information or materials again um, to uh, vote in all your elections. Um, the second piece of our post-election work is going to involve the 58 schools where we're currently partnered with. Um, so what we've been working with our schools to do is to build voting into the infrastructure of the school. And uh, build in, in order to do that over the long term, it needs to be uh, voter engagement work, uh, getting folks signed up for TurboVote and you know, doing that, getting them registered and getting them uh, their materials for absentee request uh, and reminders. Um, that process needs to not be tied to election cycles. That's, that needs to be uh, tied to the college calendar rather than the election calendar. And so that means uh, working with our schools to make sure that uh, every single year as new freshmen are being uh, brought into the school, um, they're getting signed up uh, for Turbo Vote as part of that process. And then the uh, third piece of our, um, of our work is um, you know, working, you know, uh, reaching out to more schools um, who want to uh, join that uh, coalition. So that means, um, uh, you know, we're doing that in four states in particular, um, New Jersey, Virginia, uh, New York, and Florida. Um, although, uh, I, uh, for uh, the folks at uh, Maryland Institute, I'm, I'm reaching out to some folks at Towson to see if there's demand for it in Maryland. So I'd love to talk to you guys uh, offline. Uh, if uh, Wonderful. Anyone else have anything else to add about this particular issue? What's well, next? The election is really a big deal in a lot of ways. And even after, even after the election occurs, we uh, still have to work on making sure that a lot of bad laws don't remain or don't get passed. Characterizing some of the restrictive election laws as uh, Jim Crow laws, while uh, dramatic is fairly accurate. We've got to stop that from happening. Meanwhile, we have to make sure good things happen. For example, we need a, a press that's trustworthy again, and there are efforts to uh, help make that happen again. Things like the restoration of FAO, issues sometimes as, media, as immediate as a Hurricane Sandy relief, and that will be with us for a long time. Uh, I'm operating in the mode, though, that do things in a way, and then with some public stuff, but it's the back channel stuff in conjunction with uh, being a squeaky wheel that may get things done. I'm stopping there. Um, I, I would just also add that um, this is one of the first elections where we're seeing a lot of social uh, voting um, attempts or, or projects um, and uh, for our project in particular I think there uh, there needs to be someone um, working on iterating and, and figuring out what worked and building out uh, social voting online um, 
even for, for every election going forward. Um, and also there's the opportunity to get, um, especially <laughs> and to get people who turn um, 18, people turn 18 every day so we can get those people uh, notifications online that they should register to vote um, when they turn 18. Um, so uh, yeah, there, there's a vast opportunity to make uh, social voting online even more effective going forward. I just wanted to add. So um, I guess this leads me to my next question, and then I'm going to turn it over to the students. What do you think was one of the biggest challenges in implementing your platform, or implementing your site, or getting people engaged in what you were trying to do? I'll I'll jump in. Um, so I think uh, this is also I think that the um, the challenge with all tech startups these days is traction and getting people to notice you. There's just so much out there, and uh, not everybody can afford to spend a million dollars on um, Google ads or Facebook ads, and uh, you know it's hard to sort of it's just hard to kind of get through the tremendous amount of content that's out there. So a couple of ways that I think um, we've overcome that, and I think it's, it's advice uh, to anybody in a startup or anybody trying to do anything really is partnerships. So uh, we've tried to work with bloggers, with uh, media platforms, uh, really anybody who's willing to kind of uh, see our value and uh, at least give us a little bit of um, visibility on their sites so that instead of... Um, Necessarily paying for uh, uh, for for visibility, we're exchanging value for value. They're giving us some value by giving us visibility, and we're giving them value by helping them to understand their audience a little bit better. So, um, uh, it's still, it's never an easy process. And um, as much as uh, you, we focus on the tech, uh, which is a separate challenge uh, that I think the other guys in the call probably uh, would agree with. Uh, the whole marketing aspect of it is one that takes just as much, if not more, effort and creativity. Yeah, I'd say a big challenge we're having in election protection, but also veterans and military families, is just getting people to, just getting people to work with each other. Um, I guess we're not good at it, whether we're philanthropies or other kinds of uh, activist groups or companies or even factions within companies. People aren't good at working with each other, and that's a next big challenge to make that happen. Um, I mean, a major challenge at uh, TurboVote was that uh, we didn't have uh, very many good precedents of folks uh, using the tool at scale before this election cycle. So. Uh, I worked, you know, we had to work very closely and it took, a, you know, there was a lot of sort of false starts, um, you know, getting uh, some good precedents done in the spring. And then once, um, once you know, folks had sort of started to show what's possible when um, sharing voting is uh, as easy as sharing a link, um, it was much easier to uh, get more colleges bought into it. But getting those first couple of examples was... Um, was very hard. Um, I'd also add we uh, we had, we didn't. It took us a long time to get our site redesigned, and it used to be teal. And trying to get people to use a really <laughs> a website that's teal is a challenge. Um, and then I just wanted to add one thing to the last section about our 2013 plan, since I know um, uh, Craig and Tiffany, I know Seth has talked to you guys about this, but um, we sort of have two pieces of it. And I, I talked a little about our colleges piece, which I thought would be most relevant to the Goodman Foundation work, but we also, this, and this is just might be interesting for other folks as well, we're um, working with uh, local governments to uh, uh, to actually uh, build a back end so that they can just make turbo vote the way that they process um, uh, their voter registration and absentee ballot request and uh, voter reminder services. Great. Uh, so I have a billion questions to ask each of you individually. Tiffany? 
Oh, that's okay if you want. Oh, sorry. To I have a billion questions to ask each of you individually. Hello? I have a billion questions that I could ask each of you individually, but I'm going to turn it over to the students to give them an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so there's, uh, the more we've been doing kind of this work with um, student voter registration, it seems like every couple of days we find out about a different organization across the country doing voter registration work. And TurboVote kind of seems to be trying to create an overarching system. Um, but do you think it would be beneficial to create kind of these broader systems, kind of like for like college applications, everyone just applies with the common app, and it's kind of one system that everyone goes through. But obviously a lot of different organizations have their own special niche in what they're doing. Um, can you just, I'm not quite, can you sort of reword your question a little bit? Yeah, I'm curious in terms of, whether you see benefits in kind of creating an overarching system, would that kind of um, eliminate a lot of the smaller organizations, or is it just beneficial to kind of create one larger brand name for all voting inquiries? Yeah, that's a good question. So I mean, we um, we do a lot of different kinds of partnerships. So um, so you know, a lot of groups, uh, you know, so some groups like the colleges we partner directly with. Um, we, you know, make a co-branded version of the site. So, for example, if, you know, like the University of Florida one is ufl.turbovote.org. Um, and then that's something that the university feels comfortable building into their infrastructure. But we also uh, work with a lot of advocacy groups who sometimes do white-labeled versions of the site where they're just using the technology, but they're not using any of our uh, branding or logos or anything. So that's... Um, uh, that's what, uh, to, to, to a certain extent, we were working on with um, Vote for Change. So, uh, or I mean, Vote for Fight for the Future. On so, um, uh, so the, um, so yeah. So we we basically are looking to provide tech to groups that are, um, you know, providing this, uh, you know, doing organizing work that they want to. Uh, have a consistent brand on and then co-brand with uh, universities that are looking for a way to build into their infrastructure. Um, I also have a question for, you know, all of the panelists at large. Um, just out of curiosity, do you think that mandatory voting should um, be implemented in the United States and if so, why or why not? Wow. <laughs> I kind of like the idea, but I would run it by folks like at the Electronic Frontier Foundation for fear of unintended, question, uh, unintended consequences. The idea of coercing people does make me uh, itch a little bit. So at that point, I would defer it to uh, people who do nothing but think about these issues. <laughs> um, in the United States, we do have a real engagement problem, and uh, there are many countries that have mandatory voting, and um, it seems to work pretty well. Um, we obviously have a different political context, and um, we're a very large country, um, so we have an engagement problem that comes from lots of different things about our political system um, and our civic. Um, so mandatory voting is, for me, definitely one of the options to think about when thinking about um, dealing with our engagement problem. We're trying to do things with you know, what we're building to see if we can help solve that engagement problem in the US um, outside of mandatory voting, for example, as, an, as the main option. Um, but I do think it works well in other countries. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think also, um, you know, the, the difference between 
uh, mandating voting and maybe making it just a little bit easier to vote, like make Election Day a holiday or something. Um, I would be curious what the impact of those two different strategies would be before making a decision. I think it would be difficult in this sort of era of uh, freedom being like the buzzword where everybody, nobody wants to be told what to do or how to do it. Um, I think if the, the process of voting was made easier, I mean, for example, I got my absentee ballot through TurboVote very easily this year, uh, props to TurboVote. I tried getting my absentee ballot in 2008 and I failed and so I actually ended up not voting because I was overseas and I couldn't get my ballot in time. Um, so I think, you know, those efforts to facilitate the voting process are um, potentially easier to implement and uh, then you can see whether or not, uh, because there's been some studies done on uh, mandatory voting where if you force all 180 million people or 200 million people to vote, you get a lot of very um, uninterested voters voting, and that may skew your results in all sorts of other different ways. Um, so I agree with what Tiffany said about engagement. I think we really need to work on the engagement process so that people want to vote and feel like their vote matters. I would just add that one interesting angle to this question that we deal with a lot at TurboVote is the issue of decentralized power uh, in voting in the U.S. So in almost every other developed country, uh, voting is run at the federal level. Um, but in the U.S., all the rules are made at the state level, and the elections are actually administered on the county level. So you're dealing... Um, so any kind of rule like that, like it would be very hard for the federal government to actually implement that because all the elections are being run at the county level. And so um, the issue of the larger issue of federalism and how that affects our voting system um, is, a, is a major challenge that, uh, that, keeps, uh, that keeps us from being able to make a more competent and easy to use uh, voting process. One thing I wanted to, I mean, I think this is a really interesting topic um, and going in, uh, it, it's sending us into a pretty interesting direction. One thing about the engagement problem that we have and to echo what you guys just said, um, there are other there are mandatory voting wouldn't fix some of the problems that we actually have um, because there's people don't vote for various reasons right now. Um, part of it is a broken system, electoral college, um, over you know a popular vote system. Um, so you can look at all of these different things, two parties, two you know the fact that we have two main parties, things like that. Um, I, I, I'm sure there are many studies, and I'd love to hear, maybe not on this call, but um, about uh, what some people think are some of the main reasons that people don't vote. I'm sure there are studies about, about that. Um, I know that uh, money in politics is one of the main reasons people cite now. Um, I think Shauna wanted me to speak to um, the earlier question about challenges. Um, so I'll just speak briefly about it. Um, the challenge that we saw and what we're doing is actually a, sort of an interesting one about um, tax rules <laughs> and um, IRS standing and things like that. So our project is funded um, by, um, or is a C3 project. And, it, there are a bunch of rules when you actually do uh, registration and GOTV work and election protection work um, that bars organizations like ours in particular who also do advocacy from being able to speak to issues. Um, and so when we're trying, when, as we're trying to activate young people and infrequent voters to go vote, um, it's we're finding the message about, you know, the altruistic message about go and vote um, isn't as effective for, as the message like go vote for this X cause. Um, and we're creating the tools to allow organizations to talk about their cause and issues and get people to vote for those issues and causes. Um, and that that seems to be why people who want to get engaged end up getting engaged. Um, but the C3, the C3 rules make it so that those who actually do work on voting um, in the C3 capacity have a harder time to 
talking about or getting setting it up so that um, people can talk about issues and causes and go vote for that. Um, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, I wanted to speak to what you what you just said, Tiffany, because one of the things that we found too is that you know the the question of do your friends vote? Um, how do you activate people around that question? And earlier in the summer, um, what what we did is like we would go to different um, constituency groups. We went to the uh, the Pride um, the Pride uh, Pride New York Festival here, and then we had our ambassadors in New York just go around and ask people about like if their friends voted. And the, the really interesting the really interesting thing there was like a lot of the community, the LGBT community, would uh, a lot of the people that we spoke to at the festival would say like, yes, my friends vote because it's it's they know that it's important that you know we get a, a, you know a marriage. Um, nationally, so I think thinking about like, well, if you talk to different constituencies, how do you make it pertinent to that particular group? And when they're talking to their friends, um, makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if there's like some delay um, on on uh, de maybe Sabrina's end, but if any of the other students have any questions, you can certainly go ahead and chime in whenever you whenever it makes sense. So, Bobby, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions, or Maria, feel free to ask any questions whenever it makes sense. Okay, yeah, uh, I have a question actually. Um, so obviously. With each, you know, election, each presidential election, there there is more, you know, with the internet progressing and everything, there's more and more um, civic technology uh, engagement. But I guess, um, what what are the plan? I know you're obviously focusing on the next few day, focusing on the next few days. But what is the plan for, like, midterm elections? And and those do do the civic engagement sites websites um, plan on being uh, having the presence that they do now? I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so when we launched Votify, uh, one of our sort of initial um, objectives was to figure out a way to deal with the issue that fewer and fewer Americans have uh, are, are using traditional methods of communication to access and share information. So fewer people have landlines, fewer people watch cable TV. Um, and we predicted that by 2016, the numbers are going to be such that um, for example, polling companies won't be able to run a traditional landline survey and that, you know, it'll be very difficult to call people on their cell phones because people don't answer their cell phones. So, you know, as we get closer and closer to that breaking point, um, we're, very, we're very interested in developing ways to um, facilitate the whole voter engagement process through mobile technology. And, you know, frankly, I don't know in 2016 if people will be using iPads or people using you know, Androids or whatever. I mean, I think the, the way the technology is evolving so quickly, it's hard to really predict. I mean, in 2008, there was no iPad. Now there's like 10 different iPads uh, in just a period of two years. So um, we definitely think that um, as far as, you know, responding to your question about uh, what, what we're going to be doing, and I think what a lot of uh, organizations in this space would be to figure out ways to engage and activate people uh, in, the, in the most unintrusive way possible, but really focusing on the fact that they have this mobile device and they're accessible through it 24 hours a day, seven days a week.
Um, one thing I would just add here is uh, how many local elections uh, there are in between the two-year cycles. Uh, and that's a major focus for us. Uh, you know, I was just looking at, um, you know, there's a New Jersey primary in June, and about 600,000 people voted in the last, in the uh, uh, 2009, uh, the equivalent primary in 2009. So, you know, we could, uh, you know, 6,000 extra voters there is a full percentage point of the electorate. So, you know, we can work with colleges to, you know, get six to 12,000 voters to, college voters to turn out. Um, you're actually, see, you know, you're actually creating a constituency that then um, politicians need to answer to, and uh, you know, making, you know, creating a more empowering uh, experience of democracy for college students, which uh, is something we're really excited about. Um, so. Craig, I, I realize you need to exit shortly, so is, did you have any final thoughts? Um, basically, that the issues that we're talking about are difficult and long-term, and we need to work together better uh, on them. Uh, Tiffany's group, Fight for the Future, is addressing uh, you know, some of these uh, longer-term issues as well as shorter-term issues. The uh, Fight for the Future Facebook app for voting actively seeks to enlist people in one's social graph, creating that kind of peer pressure, which I think is really important. Uh, so again, I feel we should do things in the here and now, and for sure the election is in the here and now. But beyond that, uh, we got to think ahead in the future. Uh, this decade is going to be a big one for our species. And uh, I do a lot of my planning around, you know, what's going to happen in 2020. And beyond that, the decisions we make this decade are going to influence things for a long time after. So that's why a lot of these efforts are doing well. I should mention, too, uh, TurboVote is doing great work getting people registered. Uh, that's pretty cool. And we're working with them as, as well as other parties. I'd like to say something funny to conclude, but I can't think of a good one. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us today, Craig. Um, I'll let the, the rest of the group continue on if you guys have any other questions. But I realize you need to head out shortly. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Did any of the other students have any questions for anyone else? No. Sabrina, are you back with us? Did you did you have any final comments? No, I was just going to ask if each of the speakers could give um, some final thoughts. For the students, maybe we could start with Tiffany. <laughs> okay, she's having some technical difficulty. Um, we'll move on to Asil. Uh, okay, well, final thoughts. Um, I think that uh, as uh, I spent the last couple of weeks learning about what the Vote Everywhere project is doing, like I, I'm excited for what the students are doing on campus. Um, so good luck in the last couple of days. Um, I think uh, looking ahead to the next couple of years, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the 2008 election, uh, was a lot about you know what the campaigns were doing to campaign better, right? Raise more money, have more apps, things like that. I think the 2012 election is, I think, a lot more about uh, empowering people with technology. And so you've seen a lot of startups in the, the tech space uh, looking at technology, politics, and democracy. So I think it's a great place uh, to be in uh, to figure out 
not what's the next app uh, that may be amazing. And I think I think really thinking at a higher level as to how are people's behaviors changing, and then how can technology facilitate and enhance that? Um, you know, kind of we take a you know at Votify we take a very nonpartisan stance on things, but we just want people. Uh, on all sides of an issue to be engaged, and so I think technology can help that a lot. And I think, um, you know, as you guys move on from school and stuff and get more involved in politics, it's a great, uh, it's a great um, uh, area to be involved in. And, and you know, if anybody wants to talk more about it, then we're we're always happy to do so. Sure. So, uh, yes. I mean, thanks uh, to the you know, Chana and Sabrina for uh, having me on today. Um, and yeah, we're very excited to you know work with more leaders to kind of figure out how we can uh, you know you know make that world I was talking about possible, where every college is providing every student with every uh, piece of information and all the materials that uh, he or she needs to vote in every election. So. Uh, you know, for the students, I'd love to you know get your advice uh, offline about it. Um, and for the for the Andrew Gibbon folks and uh, you know other folks on the call, you know, I'd also you know, love to if you guys have thoughts or uh, folks you think we should talk to. Um, you know, we're really sort of trying to build a broad coalition of folks to work together on that goal. Yeah, I think that um, there's well. I obviously come, I work on internet policy and I work on you know uh, how, protecting how the internet um, plays a role in our lives and, and continues to do so. Um, and we've seen the internet transform um, different things like getting renewing your license um, and, and making some things easier and even causing some structural changes in, in politics and um, you know allows for protests and things like. To, to sort of rise up, um, and so I'm excited to see the potential of what the internet can do, uh, mixed with actual, you know, real reforms um, that get us to a better system of engagement. Um, I think when when we get to that point where people are actually engaged and are able to fully express themselves and, and give um, what they have to give to the world, it's the internet. Helps to enable some of that, um, and uh, and, it, and um, that would that comes from a system, uh, a country that has much more engagement than we do now, um, in issues and in voting and everything in general. So I think there's a lot of potential going forward, um, and we're already seeing this year um, the the change that is happening, and we'll see the results if if it actually um, amounts to something that's that's good for the public. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We, if the students have no other questions, I want to bid us adieu. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you'll join us at Hidden Heroes. Um, China, do you have anything else to add? No, I just I also want to say thank you on behalf of the Andrew Goodman Foundation and our Vote Everywhere initiative, and we continue to, we continue to, um, like to work with you all in the future as we move into 2013. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.